Here we are now back at the Azus ROG booth for PAX 2018. And I asked some questions here behind the scenes of what's been going on with the reviewers getting 95 watt limits. Is that because the boards uh, essentially just can't handle the 9900K when it's overclocked? And they responded to me and said, no, these motherboards, especially like the Maximus Hero 11, it can handle well over 200 watts, absolutely fine, no problems. Uh, what was happening with those motherboards specifically was uh, when you jump into the BIOS, it asks you, do you want to use the ASUS recommended settings? And so if you hit no, it'll then lock in Intel uh, recommended settings, which the Intel recommended settings will then lock in a 95 watt TDP limit, unfortunately. But I've been checking out these CPUs here because something I noted in my review of the Maximus Hero 11, and when I looked at that board, uh, I did overclock the 9900K and uh, the VRM was absolutely fine when I checked it in real time. Uh, that's without a fan on it too, by the way. Uh, so one thing I did forget to mention in that review was the silicon prediction, which is part of the AI optimization. And Azus actually showed me here on the floor a live demonstration of what it can do. This is how we roll, man. And now with this technology, it's implemented in the Prime A or better motherboard. So like Strix motherboards, ROG motherboards will have this feature implemented. And uh, what you do is you can load up with your overclockable uh, Intel CPU, whether it's an 8700K or a 9900K, uh, load up Prime 95, and then you can hit small FFT, so you can hit a custom blend, and it'll start learning the maximum capabilities of the CPU. And you do this for five minutes, then you jump back into the BIOS, and you now have a prediction on the voltage and also the sweet spot essentially for this CPU. So right behind me here, we've got an 8700K and it's going uh, to 1.14 volt. We lock that in manually, 4.6 gigahertz. And then we load it back up into Windows and we now have a stable 4.6 gigahertz running at really good voltages. So you can see it behind me, it's been running here. I've uh, been testing out the features, it's been running well over 20 minutes, absolutely uh, no problems. And we know with small FFTs what that does to the CPU. It's essentially one of the worst torture tests you can put on a hyper-threaded CPU or a CPU with SMT for that matter. So all these monitors here as well, you're probably noticing Call of Duty Black Ops 4 is being run all around this whole booth here. It's pretty crazy to get into the environment. Uh, Azus told me that they're all being run on the AI mesh network. Essentially all their routers uh, can link into each other, providing all internet connections off of one uh, separate internet modem, for example. Pretty crazy when you think about it, because now the whole of PAX can essentially be wired with really good coverage from the AI mesh network. This is something that they told me that is implemented into the Azus routers. And we're taking a look at one of these previously on the channel. It was very easy to use, but also had the advanced features and all that jazz. So pretty much when it comes to routers and monitors, Azus have it all covered and they're not afraid to show it off. So right beside me here as well as a new product being brought to market by Asus. This is their ROG Ryujin, taking after a bit of a Japanese naming scheme there. 360, 240, and then they've also got the Ryo. 240 and 120. Now all these coolers have an OLED readout as well, so it will tell you things like temperature, voltage, and also overclock speeds, as well as being able to dial in your own custom image, if you wish to, on this cooler. They do look really sleek, and of course, they do cool really well. I was testing out some Prime 95, small FFTs, on these coolers before and we we're getting a maximum of 76 degrees. I believe it's a non d littered chip as well. So they can provide the cooling when necessary. However, they do come in with a premium of $200 or more starting from the 120 and going all the way up to the 360 mil versions. So they are definitely a luxury item there, but they will give you a nice bling, a nice aesthetic, especially if you've got see-through panels, which most cases do nowadays. In terms of release dates, you can expect to see them on the shelves in the next week or so. So right here behind me, we've got the Call of Duty Black Ops 4 tournament, all being played, of course, on Azus ROG monitors, keyboards, and mice. Now, if you are at PAX, get down here to the booths because it's not just ROG booth as well, but it's also plenty of other booths that have a lot of discounts going on things like peripherals and monitors. Azus here have a discount on their headsets, their keyboards, their mice, their monitors. You can get in with an absolute bargain. Now, I did try some of their keyboards and their mice, and I did like their fingertip grip mouse as well. Did fit the hand really well. 
So I might even be picking up one of these things because because it's just a really cool atmosphere, really cool environment to be around. High energy. Hope you guys have enjoyed this video too. If you have any questions or comments about the motherboards or about the monitors or the headsets or the mice or the keyboards or the AI overtuning, overclocking feature, then be sure to drop a comment in the comments section below. And also the new coolers as well, which will be hitting the market very soon. Interesting to see that Azus is slowly branching in to pretty much all things PC. If you enjoyed this one, then be sure to hit that like button and I'll catch you on another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye. Walk in the spot and I drop one track. Know who the best, know who the best is. Walk in the rave like check this.